Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday's broadcast. Wherever you are located, whether you be here or all over the world, I welcome you and it's so nice to be with you today. And I wanna talk about um, still the three-part being that we are. Um, the title of this message is Understanding I am raised and seated in Christ Jesus. Now, I was talking last week about man being a three-part being, and it says that man is a spirit. He has a soul, and he lives in a body. With my spirit, I contact the spiritual realm. With my soul, which is my mind, my will, and my emotions, I contact the intellectual, emotional realm. With my body, I contact the physical realm. Now, we think that once we receive salvation or we accepted the Lord as our savior, that all of us got saved, but that's not the case. And it also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he, his spirit man, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Did my mind become new? Did my body become new? What actually became new? Well, the good news is my spirit man was recreated. My soul did not become new, which is my mind, my will, and my emotions. Neither did my flesh, my body, become new. So how do I reconcile this with my recreated spirit? What do I do to bring everything into alignment so that all of me can function um, as the Holy Spirit leads my heart, my spirit man. How, how does it all work? Man's body, the outward man, does not become new. It is the inward man, the spirit that becomes new, becomes a new creature in Christ. Now, because all things have not become new in my body or my soul, in the new birth, that means I still have the outward man that I have to deal with. And as long as I am and you are in your body, you will have to the desires of the flesh. And this is what I was sharing last week and I'm recapping because this is very important for our growth and for operating in spiritual things to understand some things. So as long as um, we are in our body, our will has desires of the flesh, our carnal nature and our unredeemed soul to control. That's big, but it's not too big for God because as we receive his word, as we study his word, which is an ongoing process, it's not just something we do, but we continually to uh, study his word, meditate on his word, allow his word to, um, to be engrafted in us. As long as we do that, we continue to um, go through the process of our minds being renewed. In James chapter one, verse 21, and I'm reading this from the Royal New Testament's Greek, wherefore putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness receive in meekness the implanted word 
which is able to save your souls. Now you think about the soul, as I said, it's the mind, will, and emotions. That's the last part of us is, is to be soul, saved, is the saving of our soul. Now you think save, the word of God, which is able to save our souls. So the Greek word for save is sozo, is defined as to save, deliver, protect, heal, preserve, make well, and make whole. Now, we don't want to be partially whole or just getting by. We want to be whole spirit, soul, and body. When we actively feed on the word of God, the word saves, the word delivers, the word heals, preserves, and makes whole our soul, which is one of the greatest defenses against the enemy. Now, the, Satan comes, and where does he come? He attacks our mind with thoughts. That's why the Word of God tells us to casting down imaginations and bringing every thought into the obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ. When in Ephesians it talks about, finally my brother be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Strong to resist evil, to overcome every foe within and without. This kind of strength comes from God. And if one is vitally united to Christ by living by faith, we will be strong to do all that Christ requires of us, of us to do. When you think about the time that you and I are living in, we haven't been this way before. We haven't lived in a time like we are living in and every uh, state or in the world. Things are totally different. We don't have a norm for this. We are allowing the Lord to give us a new norm and how to function in this environment. But the first thing I would say is the renewing of our mind because that is so important. If I allow that process by studying the word of God, if I allow that process by meditating on the word, then you know what happens, as it says in Ephesians 2, 6, then I understand that I was raised with him and made to sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I will know that. I will understand that. And guess what? Everything will begin to line up with that authority that I'm seated in and the power that I'm seating in, in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. So that helps me understand that when I'm taking authority, I'm taking authority over a situation, a circumstance. I'm casting down an imagination. I'm taking that thought captive, I'm grabbing it, and I'm replacing that thought with the Word of God. When I understand these things, and my mind is continually being renewed, this is not a one-time renewing. It is a continual process that I am going through day after day as I'm meditating on the Word of God, having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit questions, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then it says, all these things will be added unto me. Finally, you know, when you think about it, be strong in the Lord and, and in the strength of his might, be strong in him, not in you or your abilities or your knowledge. No, be strong in the Lord. Um, it is, 
It's not a puffed up place to be. It's not an arrogant place. I'm strong in him because I understand his word and I'm applying his word to my life daily, making the changes. This is another thing. We have to make the necessary changes as the word brings them to us. That's part of the renewing process. Remember, the only thing that's saved is our recreated spirit. Good news. But now we are going through the process, each one of us that are listening to this broadcast, we're all going through this process of our minds being renewed and studying and meditating on the Word of God. And the Word of God also tells us to think on these things, whatsoever is good, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is kind, whatsoever is of good report. These are the things I am to think about, meditate on daily. When you think about it, man's body, the outward man, does not become new. We would like it to become new, but it doesn't become new. It is the inward man, the spirit, that becomes a new creature in Christ. Why aren't our souls born again? Do you ever stop to think about that? Why is not my mind by born again? I thought that when I received salvation, all of me received salvation. Well, that's what I thought when I first received salvation. I didn't understand that I had to put away some things. I had to stop some things. I thought they would automatically fall off of me because I had received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I thought that they would just fall off, but guess what? They didn't because the, the recreated spirit, that recreated my spirit. But now I have to go through the process of the saving of the soul. Why aren't our souls born again? Good question. I'm glad you asked. Because a new birth is a spiritual birth. It's not an intellectual birth, a rebirth of man's mind. It's not soulish birth, a rebirth of man's soul and emotions. It is also not a physical birth, a rebirth of man's body. Now that's a lot to process, but it makes sense. Because a new birth is a spiritual birth. It's not an intellectual birth. It's not a rebirth of man's mind. It is a spiritual birth. My spirit has been recreated. The new birth is only a rebirth, as I said, of man's spirit. It is not a mental or a physical experience. The baptism in the Holy Spirit isn't a physical or mental experience either. They are both spiritual experience, which eventually affect the physical and mental realms of man. A believer's spirit is recreated in the new birth. The believer will have to do something, you and I, after that initial recreating of our spirit in the new birth, now we set out and that we and we alone have to do something with the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions ourselves. If we don't do something, with this soul, it will give the enemy access to our life. What happens? We get a, a thought, an attack. It's an, a thought, a thought totally opposite of the word of God. Totally something just kind of flies in here. And the minute we begin to just say, hmm, and think about that, guess what? That becomes a stronghold. 
because we are to cast down imaginations and thoughts, high things that exalts itself against the knowledge again of word. So what am I supposed to do? Does it fit in this word? Does it fit in the word of God, this thought that I have? How does it go with um, casting down the imaginations? How does this, this, this thought that came to me that came out of nowhere and I'm thinking it's the truth, but it's not the truth because remember Satan knew part of the truth and he, but the rest of it is not the truth. So the word of God is the only thing that will save the believer's soul, his mind, his will and emotion. So that means when I am in that place of pressure or I'm in a place where I think that people are out to get me or people are against me or they've rejected me or they, they, they don't like me or they wanna throw me away or they don't believe in me. These are thoughts that the enemy plants in our mind and we right then, instead of starting to think about that and meditate on that, right now we have to throw that thing down and think on whatsoever's good, whatsoever's lovely, whatsoever's of a good report. I have to then think on those things. And then I go to, to the love chapter and it tells love does take not account of a suffered wrong. It's not then glorious. It's not puffed up with pride. It's not envious, it's not jealousy. So when I'm thinking on all of these things that are opposing the word of God, the, 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 the engrafting of Satan's thoughts have gotten into my mind and I must do something with that right away. Also in James, uh, it says 121, it says, wherefore putting away all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness receive in meekness. Not, I studied the word and I know. No, meekness, receive in meekness. The word as you're reading it, receive it. Lord, thank you for showing me. Thank you for opening up the eyes of my understanding. You know, sometimes we can hear a message and it excites us and or we can hear truth in the word of God and we get excited and, and then we want to get puffy and then we want to banter or argue about that because we got the revelation. No, that doesn't last long unless you've applied it, but it's not a one-time application. It is as I'm walking my walk with Christ, as I'm living, in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. As I am applying, walking, living, and continuing to allow that engrafted word to get inside of me that I got so excited about. Hallelujah, I got excited about this, this teaching or this message. And then I just throw it out there and lambaste somebody because um, I have the knowledge and they don't have the knowledge. No, we don't do that. What happens when we are in this position? We are still in that process of allowing that word to be engrafted inside of our soul, most of all in our heart, and then it travels up to our soul. And so then I can say after a couple of months, do you know what? I still have this. I still believe this. I have actually taken this and applied it to my life. Now I'm walking out the changes, the necessary changes that had to be made. I'm walking this out in faith, faith in the word of God that I am taking this word. I am applying it to my life. I am allowing it to be in me. I am allowing it to change me. I'm not reverting back two days later now because I came against a situation or a situation came against me. And now I just went back to zero when I was going to 10. No, I have to realize this. The thief, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But it also says, the Lord says, but I have come that they may have life and that life inside 
of me. I, he came to bring his life inside of me. So I know that when the thief, when you begin to grow and you begin to uh, get excited about the word and you start making the small necessary changes as the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you, when you start making those changes and you keep making the changes, now you can say, I am progressing. I am progressing now because I'm just not quoting something or getting excited about something. I've actually taken what that I've quoted, got excited about, now it's applicable in my life. And you won't have to worry. People will see the change inside of you. There's a saying that says people, well, you can't hold water. Well, that's how it is with some people with the word. They can't hold the word because they've never allowed that word to solidify inside of themselves. When the word of God is there, you know it and everybody else knows it. When the word of God is working, you know it and everyone else knows it because you learn now your temperament is even and you know how not to fly off the handle. You know not to, to go think people just don't like me or they're just jealous. No, you, you walk even kill you just keep climbing with him you just keep going higher in him why because it's the word that is that is bringing you to a place of peace in your spirit peace in your mind you know that you are moving on with him and you go from faith to faith and from victory to victory this is what we want to do and as i said to save the greek word is sozo it means, it is defined as to deliver, protect, heal, preserve, make well. But the end of that is make whole. Every one of us want to be whole, spirit, soul, and body. To the degree that we allow this mind to be as us, that was also in Christ Jesus will be to the degree that we walk in wholeness. Remember, this mind needs work. Sometimes we go so far and we've done so well and all of a sudden it takes one thing to send us back. No, do not allow the enemy to steal from you your progress, your process, and the joy of your salvation. There is joy in our salvation. We will, church, we will maneuver this new norm that we have followed, uh, found ourselves in. We will navigate through this and be the better for it. I wanna thank everyone for listening. I ask you to come back next week as we continue on in the word of God, learning and understanding that we are raised uh, together with Christ Jesus and made to sit in heavenly places with him, I invite you to come back. Once again, thank you and God bless you.